Hi, I'm Melanie Batz. Uh, I've been working in the open source world for six years now. And my purpose today is to share with you my experience and explain when, how, and why I became an open source woman developer. Nowadays, we talk a lot about diversity everywhere in the open source communities, in our companies, but most of the time, taking care of diversity just boils down to publishing a code of conduct. This is not enough. I propose to start with a small ethnological study. What is an open source developer? Are some of you working on open source software here? I am. OK, there is some. Here is an open source developer specimen. If I look at him a little closer, the popular belief is that it is a man, especially a bearded man. He lives and works alone at home, completely isolated. He drinks Coke, he eats pizzas, and as a result, he writes code all night long. What the open source developer likes most is superheroes, sci-fi, and cats. Now let's look at what a female open source developer looks like. If we compare the two, we see that there is a lot of differences. In the end, as an open source developer, I do not really match the classical stereotype. And I promise you, I tried, I really tried, but it's completely impossible for me to grow a beard. So I grant you, we have some common points of interest. I like sci-fi, I like cats, and I have nothing against a small piece of pizza from time to time. So how did I get to be open source developer? According to you, answer A, I'm born knowing how to code. Answer B, I'm coding until the end of the night. Answer C, I'm organizing surprise party. Answer D, the answer D. Who votes for the answer A? Nobody? Oh, one, one. Answer B? Oh, son. Answer C? No one. Ah, oh, one, one. OK. Answer D? OK, all the time answer D is, is warning, so one. So not a surprise for me. So let's check together. Answer A. Hey. I'm born knowing how to code. Wrong. I'm sure you've all heard these stories from developers who at two years old were talking binary, at four years were coding in C, and at six were writing their own operating system. And like usual said amongst developers, I'm going to be honest, I'm not born knowing code. I was trained and it, look, it took me a long time and I continue to train and learn all the time. I was educated, not especially like a girl. I was always told that I could do what I wanted and I was pushed, helped, encouraged and supported. So the first step to become an open source developer is to begin by being a software developer. So what can you do to help others becoming developers? The first thing is paying attention to the way you talk about your journey. For example, I can explain that at the age of 10, I had a computer and I started to develop small video games in Pascal. Yes, I'm sorry, but I'm not so young now. I started with Pascal. Um, then in high school, I decided to take computer courses. Or I can tell you how others helped me to get there. At 10, my dad brought, me, brought home a computer and let us play with it. Then my brother told me how to start my video games and showed me the source code that was hiding behind. In high school, my physics teacher suggested I take the computer options knowing my love for science. And when I was a student, my friends were members of the computer club and proposed me to accompany them to their own free software. Conclusion, I did not get there alone, far away. So, now it's your turn to support, help, advise, encourage your colleagues when they try to something new. The young people will integrate your companies, the students, and of course, your children. So I did not become open source developer because I knew how to code. Let's see answer B. I am coding until the end of the night. Wrong. One usual way to become an open source developer is to find a project that is useful to you to start contributing by reporting issues, 
Then as you are more and more aware of that project, you become a beta tester. And one day you have a bug that horrifies you and you decide to return for good in the code to fix it. You decide to participate in a hack and and you end up having a fix and dare to send your first patch. Usually this is done on your free time. Then bit by bit, thanks to the meritocracy, you touch the grail and you become committer. Hallelujah. And one day you can be hired in the company who contributes massively to this open source project. That is true, the meritocracy can do the rest, but sometimes it is a little too strict. It can tend to respect in a project only people who know how to make sophisticated code or who can be heard. So what you need to do is to try to break the stereotypes by attracting different profiles. First tips and tricks. <coughs> to become an open source developer, you should contribute to a project. Remember, people are kind and it is in their best interest to help you to get into the project. No doubt that the first patch you will send ne will need to be reworked. So do not be shy. Send it so that someone can review it to help you improve your code. Second point, when you will need to hire people in your team, you have to become aware of your basis. If you only have people in your team who love sci-fi, who eat pizza and drink coke, you have a problem. But, so how do I get there when I do not live to program, I do not code the weekend, and even if I did it, I still wouldn't dare submitting my first patch to strangers. So how do I become an open source developer? Am I organizing surprise party? True. Convinced by the values of free software and its ethical aspects, I became an activist. But from free software user to developer, there is a step. And a few years ago, I was a software developer and I wanted to be able to act and be recognized for my work. I used every day an open source software named Axilio, created and developed by a small French company named OBU. My technical skills could mostly fit what this company was looking for, so I decided to apply. To be prepared, I continued to work on my technical knowledge, and once I felt I was ready, all I needed was to create an opportunity to meet people from OBU. Thanks to my involvement in free software and as an activist, I was used to organize events. In order to meet the OBU guys, I proposed to co-organize an event in my city about the technology they were based on, Eclipse. This event was named an Eclipse Party. Conclusion, how I entered in the open source developer world? By meeting people, by participating and organizing events, by developing my network. I discovered at that period that being part of a minority is very useful. A true fact is, as a woman in the software ecosystem, you meet men with stupid opinions. Some asked my opinion on the colors, why I coded the core of the software, and you have to face sexist jokes. And still, I'm lucky I'm not blonde. So I kept the positive side of it. Being part of minority is an advantage because people easily remember who you are. Six years ago, I was able to join Hobio. So Hobio is a company specialized in the development of modeling workbenches, re relying on open source technologies and particularly involved in the Eclipse Foundation. Why was it easy for me to join them? Because Hobio is a company that is based on the values of open source. People are open-minded, attentive, which allows us to easily exchange and learn from each other. Everyone is ready to give uh, and, redistrib and redistribute his knowledge. And all this is done in a framework of high level of expertise and excellence, where the quality of the produced code is at the earth of everything. A big part of the software produced at OBU is open source. So everyone can see how we work, which pushes up to always do better. Since my first day at Hobio, people helped me a lot and advised, but not only. They offered me the opportunities because they were listening to what I could offer. That's how the day I proposed to make a cat 
that bubbles with an Arduino to promote our modeling solutions, they said, OK, go ahead. And that's a little bit crazy. So clearly, this was an atmosphere that I will summarize as very open and inclusive. But what allowed me to join them was the fact that they offered me a remote position. I could get the job I wanted while staying in the same place physically. They did not hesitate to offer me a remote position because the teams were already used to work with remote colleagues, thanks to their involvement in open source communities. So remember, give yourself the means to find the best, change your habits, and open up to others, offer remote work, and give opportunities in addition to advice. So what does it mean to be in the open source? The world of software development is known to be difficult to access for women and open source even more. I think that it depends on you, the people around us. We do the projects, we create the atmosphere. So certainly I was lucky, I came across the right people, but remember that it is completely possible and feasible. What I love most in open source is that the open source developer must be highly sociable. He constantly exchanges with other developers and users all around the world using bug trackers, code reviews, forums. So for me, open source is first about sharing. You have to communicate remotely with decentralized teams and with many different tools. We have adopted these tools and methodologies within our company to work in the same way. At the heart of our organization, we will find tools such as Git, Garrett, and Mattermost, which is a free version of Slack. So then my preferred moment as an open source developer is when I can meet the community in real life during events and conferences. And this is a very good opportunity to improve your English also. Moreover, being part of a large community will help you to be up to date and aware. For example, as you can see, I am an Eclipse committer. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you know Eclipse as being a Java ID. But participating to Eclipse conferences allow me to discover much more than that. Because in Eclipse community, you will find Java-related projects such as microservices, GEE, or OpenGenie, but also many other topics like IoT or modeling. I am not a Java ID committer. I'm a I am an Eclipse modeling committer. What I regret is that in open source communities, as well as in business, women developers are seen as unicorns. That is, mystical, rare, and precious creatures. This does not make sense. Whether in your companies or at organized events, we will find some kind of positive discrimination, as special rates for conferences, quotas, special events, meals for girls. And you seek to integrate them, and you do everything to make them feel apart. What I want everyone to understand is that I can come to a conference alone. No, I do not come with my husband. Yes, I am here because I do a talk. And no, I do not want to chat with other women just because they are women. And please, when you meet a woman at a conference, stop asking her how to improve the diversity of our community. She has more the solutions than you have. Making open source brings you so many things. You will progress thanks to the exchanges. You will leave a trace. You will be recognized for the work you did by your users and by your peers. And it can lead to unexpected perspectives of evolution. Remember, six years ago, I was a free software user, but a closed source software developer. Then I decided to become a free software activist, but I still was a closed source developer. And finally, because one day I decided to do it, and because some people believed in me, I succeeded to be a full-time open source develop software developer, which led me to become the new CTO of OBO since two months. Now, I am the technical director of a decentralized team of 10 people working on a dozen different open source products provided thanks to the Eclipse Foundation or GitHub. Remember that you can really win with, by contributing to open source projects and by opening your mind to new people. So go ahead, do not hesitate, join us, contribute to open source, and let it go. Thanks.
I have no more time for questions, but I'm her own, so do not hesitate to come.